So these two saws right here were like game changers for the whole industry. Yeah, that's kind of the whole point. Yeah. Yeah. And there's others, and we, you know, obviously there was a lot of saws that uh, copied these. I think the home light was more copied. Um, we had the Lombards and the Remingtons and a lot of stuff like that. This basic layout, um, you know, some cases they look so so much alike. It's it's scary. <laughs> it's just it's yeah. with different paint. But uh, you know, there was th this is when things really became user friendly. Kind of a, an aside is while Home Light kind of took the industrial uh, approach, the McCulloughs were always kind of on the on the performance side. A lot of kart racing back in the 60s and 70s, and the McCulloughs were the motor of choice because of the way they were laid out. Uh, Home Light actually had its roots in Portchester, New York. You know, of course, they were other places as time went on. They bought other companies. And uh, just as a real quick aside, Home Light and McCulloch really revolutionized, along with Kikoffer, with the Mercury Outboards and OMC, the die casting industry. And Home Light was one of the premier die casting uh, engineering houses in the world, not just the country. They really brought that along. And these more complex shapes they got was a result of that design and engineering department they had down there. Those guys really pushed the manufacturing technology in their day. I like, I, I like them both, and I'm, I'm looking at like I like John's room, you know. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so. Well, anyway. I've got I've got three 700 uh, or PM 700s that don't run, and uh, that's that's probably the genesis of my frustration with. Oh yeah. Um, well, what you should do in that case is, uh, you know, there there'd be a time where you could just go to your local McCulloch dealer. I want to get me one of those uh, those new. Gotta get that out of the way. I'd like to get me a new 700. The dealer might say, "Well, let's see. I don't have any on the shelf right now. I got some in the back. So oh my this God. would be your brand new, out of the box, never used, Pro Max 700." And so yeah, wow, yeah we got thing. we got Pro Max 700s in stock. There you go. And that was a 372 of their time. It's like 372 weight, and it's a 70 cc saw. And no, we're not going to pop the cherry on this today. No. What a what a nice machine. I tell you one thing, Nate McCulloch was always uh, pretty serious on a clutch though. Yeah, look at that. As thing. you can see, and that that was typical of what they did. Performance oriented. Yeah. What they were. So, yeah. So this is uh, this is one of the later ones. And this is strip, yeah, I mean, some people don't like shelf queens, but this thing is, it's too nice to... I would inspire it. Yeah, this is, this is cool because it is new in the box. And, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't mind having one that runs. I'm but hoping the I'm next, gonna... the next video we have a couple running. That's my goal. I got a bunch of stuff to do in the meantime. Well, I just noticed it, and I think I noticed it for the first time, unless it's still, oh, there it is. Yeah, we got the uh, the bar spikes, the tool. We have the uh, the plates that go here. The bar plates are here. And I got a little bit of hardware. We got our owner's manual. So we got everything that we need. So what do you think of that? I think that's awesome. That's what I. That's a pretty good collector's item. Yeah. Look at this compared to this. Yeah. There's some obvious similarities there. I mean, I think some of these parts would just obviously interchange with each other. Well, this this was the predecessor to that, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's one of the. There's a lot of saws on this basic chassis. Uh, McCulloch and Home White both were just really good at expanding. You know, a lot of different models. Now, it's funny. This this thing was only made a couple of years. These 710As. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, but there's a lot of 70cc models. There's the there's the 700. There's the Double Eagle 80. There's I mean, or seven. I don't even know what some of these things are called. I and again, I'm stressing. You know, I'm not, you know, I don't have no more McCulloch stuff like I know some of the other stuff. But you see, that obviously, there's a lot of similarities. I bet you these these starters would interchange. Obviously, the top covers. Well, this one's got safety stuff. That's yeah. a big change. It's got the chain brake here. Yep. It's got this. This does not have any of that. So 55, 60, uh, 700. What about the 81s? Is that the same chassis? Is that no, bigger? the the five cubes are different. Okay. The 800s, the 850s, the, I don't know, here again, it's whatever they were. You know, there's some, there's one guy, I forget his name, but there's one guy that watches the videos and posts a lot of stuff. 
he's the Mac guy. I mean, yeah. he would have like all the the missing information, the holes we're leaving in his store. He would have it all. Yeah. Well, and he runs these things too. And he, he doesn't. Just you know, some people. We're just going to run them for a day. We run them occasionally, but there are people that like these old saws enough, and they, they use them as their primary saws. Some guys are all McCulloch, some guys are home life, home life. Some people are just into this stuff, and they do all their work with these babies. I've done the homies for a long time, the home whites. And, uh, I don't know, we can... Uh, I honestly, I really don't have a preference to get right down to it. No, they're just, they're just little different flavors. The other thing about the home lights is, man, I'll tell you what, even if you, you get them, they, to get them running is usually a matter of getting fuel lines and a carb kit. That's about it. Well, we got a topless tree show here. So I think we're going to try to wedge it down towards the trail. And so it's easier for us to pick up the wood after we block it up. Let's see how this thing does after the pool on race. You know, I don't know if you caught it, but um, and I actually made a motion on the camera when um, I just figured I'd let it sit there, and you wouldn't even know that it wasn't running. You know, but you uh, you kept. Well, I saw that. You I kept saw getting that closer. It was the only one. It wasn't vibrating. That's why I came over to investigate. <clears throat> Done. That's the whole idea. The 925 and the XL800. That thing. Yeah, I bought the tack, and I don't know what what RPMs they're supposed to be at. So. Well, they're slow enough. You can damn near count the RPMs. Yeah. 
compared to what we're used to running. Yeah, jack it right up like that. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be a thread the needle operation right here. This either is going to look like a hero's job or it's going to look like an idiot's job. There's a lot of tree there, Bob. Yes, there is. This Where tree. Where did that top come from? I think it came off our tree. From here? Yeah. I think it hung on to the tree that's right behind you, between you and I, and twisted and came off. Boy, it popped when it came off. Did you hear it? Yeah. I do the bore cut because I want to know what's inside the darn tree. I don't know if you saw that, but sometimes you don't know what's in there. Yeah, where's that electric saw when we need it? Looking for potential widow makers. See, I think that came off our tree. Pretty sure it did. So anyway, we got some stuff to clean up, break down. This tree is actually over by the trail, so I don't mind blocking it up here because I can get here with the tractor pretty quickly. So. But the reason why we took this tree is because there was a lot of bugs in, uh, I don't believe it's a saw log. And by giving some canopy, opening up some canopy, it's going to help the younger trees.
My 925 will smoke this, even though there's both 82 cc's. Yeah. And that was clearly going through this a little bit faster than mine was. Yeah, but I got a fresh chain. <clears throat> well, you could save some fuel for the next thing. I'll finish this up with this one. Because yeah. when I go down that hole, I want to take the Mac. Okay. Yeah. All right. What chain do you have on that? What? What chain do you have? I have no idea. I think it's an off-brand chain. I'd be curious to take that same saw and throw a LGX on it. You know, the idea here, we're getting the work done with the old stuff. Yeah. Again. Again. Turned into a really nice day. It cooled right down. The sun came out. We got just a little bit of a breeze. Uh, we're in the shade for the most part. Yeah, let me see if I can get so, a shot. Yeah. Nice day here in the woods. Bugs aren't bad. Last weekend in May. Yeah. Memorial Day weekend. Actually, Memorial Day. It is Memorial Day. It's Monday. Yeah. Thanks to those who serve. Mm hmm. I get to enjoy stuff like this. So, <laughs> the next project. First thing we're going to do, we got to run some yellow saws. Um, which will be the only one we got here. I guess we got we had all the saws at a sugar shack. The truth is, right now, I mean, we hiked about 200 yards, mostly uphill from the sugar shack. So we only carried a few with us. So we're gonna make do with what we got. But it's time to run some yellow. And it's kind of light, so I'm gonna go down in this hole down here. This tree blew over years ago. Been here a couple of years now. Yeah. So I'll go down there, clean us up a little bit, and we'll get it in two or three decent sized pieces, make it out with the tractor and a chain. Yeah. Or at least the big end. time. Well, if I had a stereo system or a radio, we'd be playing Ride the Storm Out, REO Speedwagon. Camera is on. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty tired, bud. 
Yeah, me too. Uh, we didn't get a lot on camera. We got uh, kind of waylaid by a, by a storm. And we left the saws up in the woods, which was a good plan, because that means we didn't have to drag them all the way back up in the woods. Well, once was enough. But once was enough. And I think what happened was after we got back and fed and chilled <laughs> a little bit, the concept of going back up there and uh, with the camera and all that kind of went right to the... Uh, yeah, we sorry. had to go up because the saws were up there. Yeah, so we did some more. So anyway, this is kind of like the... Uh, we're going to do a few of these, I guess. Yeah. We're, we're going to just be on an old saw kick. And some of it's American. We're going to do one that's just on the old Swedish saws, the Huskies and Johnnies. And we got all the saws in the world to play with. So the idea is we don't really need to build more saws. But, you know, we're just going to kind of drag out some things that haven't run in a while. More of them are together. You know, when you're by yourself and you just want to get something done, you know, you just like whatever's, okay, let's just run a, you know, something more current. But when you're doing this as a hobbyist and you want to get together with some of this stuff, you know, having these goofy themes with old saws. Well, the other thing, too, is we were talking this morning about the timeline. Oh, yeah. This and, is good stuff. But um, to have all these old saws, it's a little more like time travel. Yeah. And you say, gee, you know, what's it like to go back and uh, actually do, a, do some work with some of this old iron? That's what we did today. And it look at us. We're about really, ready to die. <laughs> it's not like that. It was not that big of a deal. Yeah, it wasn't. Oh, just a little more weight. Um, you know, with the Mac, it was nice and light. So other than some noise, they all got a different sound to them. Oh, it's just fun. We're just playing. There's no real serious discoveries taking place here. But you can go back uh, if you got some of these old saws. It's better to take, I think it's better to do a day like today. And it's more fun if you got a buddy you can hang out and you each have some old saws. But it's better to drag them out and use them now and then than just have them sit in their garage for 20 years till you die. Yeah, you know, there just, is that. And we did learn, I think, a couple of things. Like some of them maybe sat in the garage a little... Too long? Yeah, because some of these things had to be debugged. Um, you know, the pool one just, other than the initial start, just wouldn't start the rest of the day. Uh, the 710 had a little bit of a hot start issue. It had to cool down. Uh, the 925, turns out the carb screen got blown out at some point when it was being cleaned. So some of these things you do have to debug them a little bit, but there again, that's part of the fun of the hobby because, you know, we don't really need to build more saws because we got too many as it is, but you have some of the, they get to tinker on them, keep them going, which is part of it. You got to have a little bit of skills to do that stuff. But most people that are watching this or own these things, you really can't own them without having some wrenching skills. Yeah. I don't have a whole lot to add. No, not really. Other than there's, you know, it's, we didn't show that many. You know, was, I think everybody in the beginning said, wow, we're going to see all these saws run. And if we could have got them, so we had, again, we had a hike up through the, the mud, and we, so we had to carry by hand. If we had a, a different workstation set up like the landing, like we sometimes do, we could have drove in with the vehicles, and we could have run all the saws. So that, so, but the good news is that means that we have, to, we have to do another one. Well, we have to do another one. That's the good news. The other good news was we actually accomplished the job we were trying to do with the yeah. saws that we had. Yeah. With their little bugs, we still got it done. And the second thing is the, the primary saws that we used, the McCulloch and the 925 and the 800, with a very little tweaking could be very, very uh, productive machines. Um, but like Bob said before, it's going to take a little skill. I'd say this is more like an introduction to old saws again, because this is really us going back to our roots and the hobby from the things that were interesting to us getting these old machines out and making them run and making them do what they were supposed to do uh, was the genesis of the, of the hobby for me. And this is kind of like a return to that. I mean, I had the McCulloughs and the old home lights for, for a bunch of years. And, you know, it's okay to run these things. Just because you want to run a home light doesn't mean you're some kind of a freak of nature. Although I have to admit that you've got to be a freak of nature to hang onto that thing and drag it up and down those yeah. hills. Well, you know, it's like I know there's a couple guys that... Uh... I see this, and if, if, if it gets anybody like Jamie, and I haven't forgotten your your T-shirt, Jamie. If it gets you know some guys that'll uh, you know drag some of these saws out and throw a few chips with them. We had fun. It's something. It's something, it's something different to do. Here again, it's all part of the hobby. We had a lot of fun with these old saws. Well, I worked sixty some hours last week, and that's why I'm tired. I'm tired because I'm old. I have no excuse. So yeah, I guess I'm ready for a nap. Grab a cup of coffee for the ride home. Yeah, just don't take a nap on the ride home. No, I won't. But the homies were. They ran good. 
No, but I'm really looking forward to getting my 700s running because there's a power to weight package that approaches some of the modern saws. I know. Yeah, some of the, the little quirks that we ran into. Just because it's they not were sitting. Be, it's not a design issue uh, that's indicative of the way they came off the factory line. It's just, hey, some of these saws are, you know, 40 years old or more, and, and they've all, you know, for the most part, haven't run in five to ten years, you know, that we, uh, since we dragged these things out the last time. Yeah. So that, you know, and that, that'll happen with new saws if they sit around. So sometimes you just have to, a little debugging process, and neither one of us really had the time to do it prior to coming up here today. Yeah, and you know, you looked at that 800 going, and you looked at that 925 going, and uh, the, what you really were looking at there is the difference in the chains. <laughs> I'm not taking that bait. Well, the chain on, we don't even know, the chain on the 800, we don't even know what it is. That's it's got right. no markings on it, it's got these little dots. The, uh, yeah, and, and I guess that's that's part of it, because the, the, the 710 Mac was cutting really good, and that was like a, a loop of Carlton chain on there. Okay. So at least, at least it was a name brand. Yeah. But, uh, you know, sometimes you get this stuff, you have no idea, you just throw a chain, well, this chain fits, so I'm going to use it. And if you're just you know, blocking up some firewood and it's getting through the log, you don't really think about it. It's but fine. then when you start egging each other on and all of a sudden it's like, well, this, this saw could be cut better and it's not and then you have to take some abuse. <laughs> so, Well, like you said, if it doesn't get used today, it's going to go end up in the trash. You might as well use it. Yeah, so it's not as fast as a new loop, but whatever that stuff is, I have no idea where it is. It could be Forrester chain, it could be McCulloch, but no, it could be... Uh, well, it's not pintail. It's a total chain. I mean, who knows what it is? But um, the fact is, it's you know, there's it can it can produce a lot of wood, even if it's not producing it at a real fast rate. 